Welcome to Planemaker Tutorial 28 and Blender Part 14. In our last tutorial we started skinning one of these instruments and as I was trying to skin some more instruments between tutorials because I figured I could do something similar to what I did before where I modeled all of these instruments between tutorials I ran into a couple of things that I think are worth showing you. So first of all let me point out that working with this export script the more stuff you have going on here the longer it'll take to export. So in order to avoid the export times, let me suggest to you to put everything that you're not currently working on on a layer that is not used by the export script. So I'm going to move all this to layer 5, and layer 1 only has this one instrument that we're concerned with. That saves us a lot of time when we're exporting stuff. So I hit the Z key to toggle between wireframe and solid view, and I hit the Alt or Option Z key to toggle the view with the skin on it. And here's some stuff I'd like to point out to you. Now keep in mind, we're dealing with cockpit objects here. We're not dealing with flaps or landing gear or thrust reversers on the engines. We're dealing with stuff that has animated textures. And I'd like to point out that there's three different levels of this kind of animation that we can deal with. One level is where there is no mouse clickable region. It's just simply a display. It's like a monitor that shows you different data. The second level is where we have buttons that don't move in 3D space or not enough to actually bother animating them, that would be the case for these buttons here and even for this turning knob here. And then there's a third case where we actually have a protruding lever or something that when you click on it, it moves in 3D space when we have it active in the 3D cockpit. And those are the three levels of animation that we're going to be looking at. And I'm going to go through this a little bit more in detail here. When we were trying to skin this thing here, Remember I pulled this part of it down in order to match this monitor a little bit better. Well, it turns out that wasn't such a great idea. The problem is that we're dealing with some distortion in the content of what we have here. So we're going to have to make the best of it. I checked in PlaneMaker and we do not have an instrument that will take full advantage of this particular aspect ratio that this instrument uses. So we're going to have to live with some cutoff data down here, which is fine. We'll see part of this instrument displayed, uh, just not completely. Now, what I had to do for these buttons, see these buttons used to be modified with the array modifier, if you remember, and I had a count of uh, whatever, however many there were here, and I had an offset along here. What I had to go in and do is apply that modifier and recenter all of these pink dots here. Now, notice here this panel, it has assigned functions to each one of these buttons, and my goal was to have these functions assigned to these 3D buttons. And the way I did that was to map these buttons in such a way that they take advantage of the click regions that we have on this particular instrument here. So when you have a button that's turned on, this thing will light up green. And that is kind of what I wanted to do here. I wanted these things here to light up green when this button is active. And the rest of the button should all be clickable. I should be able to just click anywhere on this button to activate its function in X-Plane. Now, I am not aware that you can actually go in and change the clickable regions of an instrument. So you're pretty much stuck having to use the clickable regions provided for every single instrument. But we can still make tons of use of that simply by mapping each of these buttons across everything here that's clickable. And notice now, this button is mapped across this button here. This button is mapped across this one. So each button is mapped across its own mouse click region here. Okay, so now I'm going to show you what I've got so far. I'm going to go back to X-Plane load up this plane, open up the 3D cockpit, and here's our instrument. And you notice how it's cut off at the bottom here. Let me just, uh, I can hit Q and E, that will enable pan mode, and then my mouse is free to point and click on stuff. You notice I have a lot of space up here, but what I want to point out, especially here, is these mouse clickable buttons. They all have their own function. You see the lights turn on and off. It's because they're mapped across the default instrument's buttons in such a way that they are usable, clickable, and animated. Now if you look at them from the side, they don't budge in at all because we haven't animated them to budge in and out in 3D space. That's what we want to look at next. But just before I do that, I want to point out that you don't always have to have a button that's animated across 3D space. It's pretty complicated to do that. And in the example of this knob here, there is kind of a way around it by combining the animated textures with a 3D protruding object. So for example, this is a mouse clickable knob and you see that the texture on top of that knob is animated. We can map it across the entire knob and we don't have to bother animating the knob in 3D space, which hardly makes a difference anyway because the human eye can't really even see 
what it is that's being animated because it's such a round knob. It actually only applies when you have a knob that is actually visible when you rotate it. All right, now there's another thing I have to show you about these panels here and how they work in combination with Plane Maker. Notice here we have a PNG file. And in the last video tutorial I showed you, we went through a process of assigning this panel here to X-Plane panel regions. We went through this and then we said X-Plane panel regions create regions. And then it created an image called panel region. And this is the image that is now linked up to the plane maker model in this cockpit. And it's linked up to the one that is used in the 3D panel. So we go to 3D panel and this is the exact image that is mapped across these Blender objects now that is used here in order to make these Blender objects functional. Now what we see here is that this is identical right now, the 2D panel and the 3D panel, but it doesn't have to be. Hence, there are two buttons here. What you can do with the 3D panel, say for example, I want this instrument to be a different one because I didn't like the aspect ratio. Remember, I was wasting space on it or whatever. Say I find a more suitable display here we have some candidates. For example, this one here, it has a different aspect ratio. So say I want to pull that in here and then I hit save. And now if we go back to Blender, we see that the old instrument is still the one being referenced here. So what we have to do is we have to go back to Plane Maker, take a screenshot of this in its 100% zoom setting, Command Shift 3, import that one into Photoshop, copy and paste it, and we export it and we overwrite the one that's currently in use, panelairliner.png. Once I've hit reload, it's referencing the new panelairliner.png. And now we can see that this new panel is mapped across this instrument in 3D. Now we can save this, export it, load the plane back up in X-Plane, and take a look at what we see here. We see that the number here, the heading, is totally at the top of the frame, just like we want it. But we also notice that now the monitor is actually displaying part of the instrument that's supposed to be the frame. So here we see how this whole process works of skinning the instruments using the combination of Plane Maker and Blender. So the implication this has for your model is that you can map anything that you've created in 3D across any function available to you in Plane Maker, and it doesn't necessarily even have to be in the right position. Notice now how the 2D panel and 3D panel no longer look identical. So we have independent control of which instruments we want to use in which cockpit, in 2D or 3D cockpit. And the other thing that's interesting is I can make use of this entire space here that in the 2D panel needs to remain transparent so that the pilot can look out and see what's going on in the outside world. The 3D panel can totally make use of this space. I can drag in any instrument I need here. So this we're going to see more of later, but just to point out that you can use all of this space to create functional 3D objects in Blender. And another handy thing I should point out to you is that you always have the opportunity to copy and paste between what you have in the 2D panel and the 3D panel. In fact, I can erase all of this by selecting A and pressing delete. And notice this is the panel that we edited and exported in Photoshop, which has now become the background of this panel here. But we can go to the 2D panel, select all these objects, copy them, and then go back here and paste them. And they're all back here. And you can even take single instruments. Say you want this one back in the 3D panel. You just hit copy here and paste here. And voila, you're back to your old elongated panel design. So this is a little bit tricky to understand. Let me try to explain it one more time. What you have in the 2D panel is what you see is what you get. This particular panel will be exactly mirrored in your 2D cockpit view when you're in X-Plane. Now when you come to 3D panel, everything depends on how the model looks in Blender. That means that I can skin every single one of these instruments according to their function and this is how I assign my 3D objects clickable regions that are actually functional and work. Now, if this still seems confusing to you, just let me tell you, I cannot explain this whole thing to you in one 10 minute tutorial. We're going to have to go through another couple of tutorials in order to nail all these different options that we have. I hope to get to it in the next tutorial where we'll do these kinds of switches, these flip switches that come out in 3D space, where when you click on them in X-Plane, they should flip from the bottom position to the top position. And we're gonna see how we can animate them and how we can make them mouse clickable all at the same time. So this is our challenge for the next video tutorial. I hope I didn't lose too many of you in this one. I know it's kind of confusing, but this is one of the harder parts of this whole process. Later on when we get to the wing flex and fan blades and all that stuff, it actually gets a little bit easier. So if you stuck around so long and are still up to the task of making a 3D cockpit, we'll walk through that process a little bit more in the next couple of tutorials. I hope you stick around. Please sign up. Please rate the video. And thanks a lot for watching.